I don't know if something has happened to you already, but I don't know if you have had someone who didn't like you in your life. Or maybe you don't have, or maybe you have someone right now who doesn't like you. And maybe you have done everything, everything you could do to win that people over. You have gone, you know, uh, uh, you have done everything possible. And I like to tell you something about my own experience. Uh, I had some time an elder in a church who, d who didn't like me. And I didn't know exactly the reason why he didn't like me. And I tried everything possible to conquer him, to treat him well, to be nice to him. But even though he didn't like me. So I have had this experience not only one time in my life. And especially being a pastor, uh, I always had many people who loved me. In a given church, I would have the great majority of people who loved me. But there were like a small number, like maybe three or four, who didn't like me. And I tried everything, everything to conquer them over, and I couldn't. So I don't know if it, it has happened to you already that someone doesn't like you, and then you try to be nice to that person. You make all sacrifice to please that person, and sometimes you even lose your own individuality. You become another person trying to make that person happy, but that person is still doesn't love you, doesn't like you, and you don't know why. Uh, I know a man, a doctor in Brazil, and his wife wasn't happy with him. And he tried everything to conquer her. She said to him that she wanted to have comfort. She wanted to have assets, you know, a big house. And he built a building of apartments. And the top one was his apartment. In Brazil, it's really important. Uh, they value their apartments more, much more than we here. We, we value houses, but they value apartments. And especially if you live at the top one. And he built a swimming pool. So it was really something awesome, wonderful. But do you think she was happy? No, she wasn't happy. So he did everything and she is still divorced him. She wasn't happy with him at all. So it's, it's interesting that sometimes we worry so much that someone doesn't love us, doesn't like us, and then we demand from ourselves, we try to do everything, we work hard. We enslave ourselves, we get out of our way, we even do things that we don't like, that we don't approve. But it's so important to have that person's love that we, we do that, to conquer that person over. But that person is still complaining, is still unsatisfied. And sometimes that person is really angry and that person hates us, hates us so much. 
And we can't understand why that person can hate us if we love them so much, if we do everything they want, but they still hate us. It's really hard to understand sometimes. And it brings us a lot of stress if we don't accept that people don't approve of us, that people don't like us. So let's say that you are going to encounter someone and you think, what can I do to make that person like me? So you think about the clothes that you're going to use. You put some perfume, right? And you think about what you're going to say and how you're going to say. And you think about your smile. So you rehearse thinking about how you can do. Also, if you're going to preach, like in my case, and it's interesting that I was really, really worried about uh, what people thought of me. So for example, if I had to play, if I had a recital, and uh, I was in the place where I would play, waiting for my time to go up front, and when I remembered that I had to play, then something here in my heart, like, would be like strong here, you know, just for thinking that I would be there. And then another uh, hard thing is when you are performing. So I remember when I was playing sometimes, uh, sometime in, a, in an audition, and I was shaking, but shaking, you know, my hands, my legs, my entire body. I was shaking and preaching. I was preaching and I was worried about what people were thinking of me, if they were liking. So every signal, everything that was a little different, someone talking or someone maybe that was tired, right? And taking a little nap. <laughs> and I was really concerned, oh, I, I might be really boring. What I'm saying doesn't make any sense. And if they left, you know, I was so stressed out that sometimes I thought about entering, like going uh, behind or below the pulpit or maybe just run out of church. And sometimes I would forget what I was saying. I just had a blink and I couldn't remember anymore. And I, I had to finish my sermon, half of it. 